Hello guys and gals, and welcome back to another episode of uh, Ginger Gamers Tech. Um, today I have a <laughs> an interesting case. Basically, this is a um, one of my viewers uh, decided that he uh, wanted me to do the swap out on his unit for him. And um, first thing I did, of course, was check to make sure everything turned on, uh, which is something that I would recommend that all of you do. Um, whenever you're working on somebody else's property, um, whether it's a computer or a cell phone or a NVIDIA Shield TV, um, I think it's very important that um, you establish the current condition of the unit before you actually do any work to the unit. And the reason why is because you never know what might be wrong with it. Um, the customer might bring it in and tell you that it works, but come to find out it has water damage, or the customer might bring it in and tell you that um, you know, uh, she can't get on the internet, but turns out she has a computer virus. Um, you know, a customer might bring his phone in and tell you that uh, he dropped it and the screen is cracked, um, only to, you know, later you find out that he dropped it in the toilet. Um, <laughs> so it's important um, whenever you're working on a device um, of any kind, just make sure that um, you know what condition it is in before you start. Um, so this is a uh, 2017 NVIDIA Shield TV Pro. Um, the one that I worked on previously was the 2015 NVIDIA Shield TV Pro. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to use a spudger this time. We actually have one, uh, even that's kind of broken. And we're going to go ahead and pop the unit open. Um, just like the 2015 edition, there are no screws. less gentle because I have a nice plastic spider which is not going to damage the unit itself. There we go. All right. So inside we have a, a fairly clean unit. Um, the fan is a little dusty but um, other than that it looks like it's in good shape. So Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the hard drive out and we're going to clone it um, onto the solid state. And um, I'm going to put it back in to make sure everything works. Um, we're also going to do a little bit of maintenance on it, um, just like we did in the last video. So let's go ahead and grab our T, I believe it was a T5 bit. No, T6, I guess. So it is the T6. I'm going to go ahead and remove some of this. Now, the other reason why you want to uh, verify that the condition of the unit beforehand is so there's no guesswork. You know, if I come in here, I take the the um, APU heatsink off. Um, I go ahead and I, and I do all this work on the unit and then I put it back together and it doesn't work. And I didn't check it beforehand to see whether it worked or not. I don't know if something that I did may have broken it. Um, and, that's, and that's one of the things that you want to avoid entirely. Go ahead and clean this fan real quick. Won't take me but a second. Come on. The fan connector is in there real good. All right. And as you can see, the fan is now nice and clean. We're going to set that aside for now. And uh, now we have our heat sink. The heat sink doesn't look too bad, but we're going to give it a go just to be sure. So now that's nice and clean as well. Not sure if you can actually, it's 
kind of hard for the camera to focus on that. You can actually see straight through it, that's why. I'm gonna focus on my fingers instead. All right, so now that we've got that clean, the next step is to take a little isopropyl alcohol. And we're gonna clean the thermal grease off of the original processor. And the heat sink. So that was actually dry, very dry. Um, I noticed because it came off very, very easily. Actually, didn't really have to do much but push it off. Dry thermal paste is generally not the best. Although, it could have still been brand new, who knows. It's hard to tell with thermal paste. Um, thermal paste usually has to go through a, uh, especially like Arctic Silver, usually has to go through a um, sort of hardening process where it, it is actually heated to the right temperature so that it can um, like seal itself. Uh, I, I remember some people talking about, you know, they like run the system for a little while, like with a, a game that uh, taxes the CPU so the temperature gets up to the right amount. Uh, but this thermal grease that I'm using is actually, um, I don't think it requires that um, baking. Okay. All right. Now we're going to reapply the thermal grease. I'm going to use the um, NTH1, came with my Noctua cooler. They were kind enough to send a rather large vial. And uh, that should be absolutely plenty. All right, so now we are going to put the heat sink back in place. Let's get the fan in there. I guess the fan is not all one unit like it is on the um, 2015 model. Hmm. I'm pretty sure this little piece of rubber came out of one of the holes in it. I'm pretty sure it's an anti-vibration mechanism. I just don't know which one it popped out of. I'm gonna guess the one that on top of the metal magnesium alloy piece. That seems the likely case. Alright. So now that we have our um, GPU CPU combo covered back up here, I'm going to go ahead and gently put in the first screw. Um, I don't want to push the uh, thermal grease down just yet, so we're just putting in the screws with minimal pressure. Alright, and now I'm going to interchange between them, because I want to try and get this down evenly. The purpose of this is to try and get that grease to spread out all in all directions, not just one. I mean, think about it like a book. You know, if you if you had a piece of, of some peanut butter here and you went like this and you squished it down like that, the peanut butter would kind of all go in that direction, maybe a little bit this way, but none would go this way. So you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure it's coming straight down, flat down, and you want it to squish it so the peanut butter comes out in all directions. You know, and we don't necessarily want anything to come out because that was the whole goal of making sure we'd only put just enough. So let's go ahead and plug the fan back in here. Um, now the next thing is to remove the hard drive itself. And from the 2015 model, we know that the hard drive is only being held down by one screw and some tape. 
However, the 2017 model may have something else holding it down. So we're gonna have to, to work at that. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and remove the one that we do know about. So it is a different color than the one in the 2015 model. We're gonna go ahead and very gently pry up the connector cable here. All right, and we're gonna pull that connector out. And you, like with ribbon cables, I know I've said this in quite a few videos, be very delicate with ribbon cables. They have a tendency to rip and tear and the connectors themselves break all sorts of just not fun things. All right, so the next step is to pull this sticker. Um, I recommend that you put this somewhere so that it can be reused or just simply push it down onto the unit. Now, this cable right here has very delicate wires. It's the same delicate wires that were in the 2015 model. I recommend that you don't pull it by the wires um, try and get your fingernails underneath of the connector and lift it that way. Now, you don't necessarily have to remove these. Um, this is actually something that I do because it makes it easier for me to remove the hard drive. Um, you can get away with not taking these out, but why take the risk of accidentally breaking one of these cables. It's just not worth it. All right, so as we learned from the 2015 unit, there's nothing else holding this down, but I'm gonna give it a quick look-see. I definitely don't wanna make any mistakes, especially since this is not mine. Um, and I think we're good to go. The only thing really holding us down here is the, is the rubber bumpers is what it feels like. And of course we have the sticker on this side that I do remember sort of held it down a little bit. Let's just go ahead and peel that sticker up for right now. All right. Um, and just like the 2015 model, it has the rubber shock absorbers. And this was glued down on the 2015 model. It is glued down on this model as well. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to take this off. Um, this is something that's very important. You definitely don't wanna lose or damage this in any way because this is a special SATA connector that works for this unit. And I doubt you're gonna be able to find another one of those uh, except for maybe off a of scrap 2017 or 2015 shield. Um, Cause not the, the 2015 regular, the 2017 regular and the 2019 pro don't use this connector. <coughs> All right, so now that we have the unit in a state of uh, disassembly here, I'm gonna press the sticker back down because we're gonna wanna reuse that. Um, and we're gonna take this hard drive and we're going to plug it into my computer. Um, and we're also gonna take this hard drive and plug it into my computer. So this is the one that, um, that he's going to have in his unit. It's an SK Hynix. Um, it's not exactly the best solid state out there in the world, but it is one that is affordable. Um, I mean, there are solid states out there that are upwards of, you know, $150, $200 that I'm sure are better than this. But um, I believe this one was $45, yeah, $45, and it's going to get you a pretty nice speed. Um, solid states in general are, are already miles faster, just miles and miles faster than platter drives. Now, granted, this is not just a regular platter drive, um, and, and you might actually want to, you know, use this, um, even if you're just swapping this out um, and your hard drive is not dead or dying. Let's say, for instance, you just are swapping it out. You know, you have no intention of, of getting rid of the hard drive. You're gonna use it for something else. You can plug this 500 gig into your computer, um, you know, just run it as storage. It's a, it's a hybrid drive, so it's a little bit faster than a regular hard drive. Um, and 500 gigs is nothing to sneeze at, especially if you are constantly in, in need of uh, hard drive space. 
Um, okay, so um, I'm going to cut the video here, and um, I will resume this on my computer where I'm going to show you guys the cloning process again. Um, and if I run into any trouble this time, I'm going to be sure to keep that on the video. Um, that way you'll see that, um, that, you know, even I have trouble cloning the drive sometimes. Um, it's just, you know, that's just what happens. All right. All right. So here we are on the computer. Um, and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go into safe mode. I have had absolutely no luck whatsoever getting the um, cloning process to work on Windows native. So I'm going to go into safe mode and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, so what you do is you go to the um, search button and you type in MS config. All right. And that brings up the system configuration window. Then you're going to go to boot. And you're going to check the safe boot button. Um, now to get yourself out of safe mode later, you have to come back in here and you have to uncheck that and do this all over again. So when I click OK, it's going to tell me that I cannot make these changes unless I restart the computer, um, which is what I'm going to do. Um, and I will see you on the other side. All right, so the cloning process is finito, finished indeed, finotted, fanatined. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. Let's go, let's go ahead and put the uh, connector back on here, and then might as well put that sticker back down. 
Um, these aren't necess actually necessary anymore because the solid states don't have vibration to them, but we're going to put them anyway because it, I think it does help the drive sort of fit in there more snugly. And you don't want it flapping around in there. And that's definitely not a good thing if it's just flapping around. What's that flapping around in there? Connect our hard drive. And you know, it's funny because the last time I did this video, I totally forgot to connect the hard drive. Alright. Let's reconnect our cables. One, two, in the butt. A pain in the butt. It's because the, the wires are so thin on this. Like, I don't understand. Alright. And then, oh, hello, Hecken. Can I uh, finish my video, sir? Hecken. Can you wait patiently there for a second? Okay. Alright, so I'm going to reuse this sticker. Sorry if there's a cat head in the way. Come on, sticker. Heckin is mad that I took his seat. Although I was here first, Heckin, and I set this up myself to do this video, sir. I'm sorry that I'm in your way. My apologies. All right, so we have the hard drive cable reconnected. The CPU is re-greased. The fan is clean. It's very nice. Um, we connected both of our connectors back and everything else seems to be in place. Went ahead and gave the Wi-Fi connectors a little bit of a push there just to make sure that they're in. So let's go ahead and put our plate back on. Here are all these satisfying snaps. Got everything in the correct places. All right. All right. And we're going to take um, your old hard drive and we're going to put it in this little baggie here. This is an anti static bag. Just in case you need this. Um, Anything could happen, you never know. Solid state could die and you might need to get a replacement and then you'd have to do the cloning all over again. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it back in the box, which I seem to have misplaced. Heckin', are you sitting on the box? Am I sitting on the box? Well, it's gonna go back in the box and I'm gonna ship this back to it. Now let's go check and see if this works. This part is always rather annoying. Yes, heckin'. <laughs> so let's see if we get it booted. Come on. Well, there we go. I've noticed that after cloning, 
takes a little bit to do that first boot. All right. So that is um, a complete SSD swap on the 2017 NVIDIA Shield. Um, pretty cool. Hope you enjoyed this video, and um, to that one special viewer out there who gave me the opportunity to work on this, thank you a lot. And I'll have it shipped back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.